This is the Improve and Have Fun podcast, and these are some comic book recommendations for books I've recently read from cover to cover. There will be links to these books right below this video, and you can support both myself and the author by buying the books through those links. Or if you're using the Comixology app like I have, you can check out these books. If you have a Comixology Unlimited membership, um, most of these, not all of these, are uh, included with the membership, so you can check some of these out. But let's go ahead and get into these comic book recommendations. You're in the comic book store browsing like I mentioned, Amazon or Comixology and looking for something great to read. Uh, so many choices can be daunting, but I'm going to help you with that. These here are books I've read cover to cover and feel confident in recommending. Why am I reading comic books regularly at the age of 43? I love rediscovering my childhood interests. I remember sitting Indian style on the floor of my bedroom reading my older brother's comics. Titles such as Marvel's Power Pack, Alpha Flight, Uncanny X-Men, Strike Force Moratori, seeing Walt Simonson's art in Thor. Since that time, I've read comics on and off. I prefer graphic novels because I like whole story arcs in one book. Recently, begrudgingly, I made the change to reading digitally full time. I say begrudgingly because in reading traditional comics, I'd give my eyes a break from all the screens I run across all day. But it's made my backpack easier on my shoulders. And these are my recommendations. The first one is Super Sons Volume 1 by Peter Tomasi, Jorge Jimenez, and Alison Borges. And I'll give you a brief synopsis as well of this story. Superboy and Robin make their superhero duo debut in Super Sons. These stories from issues number one through five take them on a collision course with Lex Luthor and introduces Kid Amazo, a villain whose ascension parallels the boys' own understanding of their powers, except he believes it's his right to rule every being on the planet. And this collects issues one through five of the hit series. Now for my thoughts. This was electric. The relationship between John, who was Superboy, and Damien, who's Robin, was fun. Most times it's competitive between the two, but they do work together. Robin eggs on Superboy, and he challenges him right back. The book also has guest appearances from Batman, Superman, and as the description said Lex Luthor. I learned about this book from the Geek History Lesson podcast and I definitely recommend that podcast if you like comic books for sure. Now the next book is Predator Life and Death. Uh, this is by Dan Abnett, Brian Albert Teese, I think that's how you say his name, Ray Rain Barreto, and Dave Palumbo. And here's a synopsis of that story. Colonial Marines on planet Tartarus battle extraterrestrial hunters over the possession of a mysterious horseshoe-shaped spaceship of unknown origin. The Weyland yutani rep wants the ship and the Marine captain wants to protect her crew, but neither objective is likely when a band of predators attacks. And this clicks issues one through four of this particular series. And now for my thoughts. Uh, this is a combination of the first Predator movie, uh, the legendary Aliens movie, uh, and also Prometheus. Uh, this is like a soup of these three movies. I'm a, and I'm a fan of these movies. Uh, this book gave me shock moments. Uh, last time I had this was while I was reading The Walking Dead and major deaths occurred inside that book. Um, a horror action book in essence. I love the artwork, but there was a panel or two where I didn't understand what was going on. It was a little, little, uh, didn't, wasn't very clear to me. But uh, Predator Life and Death was the first book that I blazed through on the Comixology app. And I was engaged from start to finish. Definitely, definitely big recommendation there. Now the next book is Paper Girls, Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn, Cliff Chiang, Matthew Wilson, and Jared K. Fletcher. And let me give you a brief synopsis of Paper Girls. In the early hours after Halloween of 1988, Four 12-year-old newspaper delivery girls uncover the most important story of all time. 
suburban drama, and otherworldly mystery collide in this smash hit series about nostalgia, first jobs, and the last days of childhood. And this collects Paper Girls issues one through five. Now for my thoughts. I've never read uh, Nancy Drew, but I'm sure this series has grabbed some inspiration from those books. I love the sci-fi elements, the adventure. The town they lived in reminded me of, of old horror to thriller teen movies from my youth, such as Monster Squad or Fright Night or Night of the Creeps, uh, to name a few. Uh, the twist in the end makes me want to come back for more. And uh, this was written by Brian K. Vaughan, and I loved Why the Last Man, Ex Machina, and I've enjoyed Saga as well. Uh, Mr. Vaughn has disappointed in any of those uh, books that I mentioned. Now, uh, the second to last book uh, recommendation, another, the rest is all published by Image, okay? Uh, the first being the Super Sons was published by uh, DC, Predator by Dark Horse, and the rest of these books, all Image Comics. And um, the next book is Deadly Class. Uh, and I saw that there's a TV show about to premiere or about to come out uh, based on this comic book. Um, this is Deadly Class Volume 1. It's called Reagan Youth. And uh, it's by Rick Reminder, Wesley Craig, and Lee Lowridge. Now, as a child, I had a fear of zombies, which turned into a love for them by adulthood, and uh, my own version of a weird Stockholm Syndrome. I used to love zombie comics, zombie video games, zombie movies. Uh, the Forbidden Planet store in NYC, 14th Street Union Square, if anyone's been there before, uh, was a regular haunt for me about 8 to 10 years ago. Uh, I would go weekly to go buy t-shirts uh, to wear at a particular party that I would be going to in that weekend. And there was a guy who worked there, his name was Matt, super cool dude. Uh, I asked him um, for a comic recommendation and he pointed me to Triple X Zombies by Rick Reminder. And I never read any of his stuff before. New author, never knew about him before. But after reading this book, that would change. Uh, fast forward to present day, while perusing the Comixology app, I punched in his name and Deadly Class popped up in the search results. Now let me give you a brief synopsis of Deadly Class. It's 1987. Marquez Lopez hates school. His grades suck. The jocks are hassling his friends and he can't focus in class, but the jocks are the children of Joseph Stalin's top assassin. The teachers are members of an ancient league of assassins. The class he's failing is Dismemberment 101 and his crush has a double digit body count. Welcome to the most brutal high school on earth where the world's top crime families send the next generation of assassins to be trained. Murder is an art. Killing is a craft. And at King's Dominion School for the Deadly Arts, the dagger in your back isn't always metaphorical. Now, back to my thoughts on this book. Um, I was fascinated by the afterword at the end of the book when Mr. Reminder talks about his real life influences in writing the story, uh, in writing this story, uh, such as bullies, friends being killed, skateboarding, and uh, moving around often as a teen. These characters in this particular book are not good people. Um, I root for them as their stories unravel. And this is not a superhero book, but teenagers looking to belong, looking to connect with others in the same age group. All the while having a dark and murderous tone. One story hiccup in the beginning, which I didn't understand, which I feel won't spoil things, is this has been mostly a spoiler kind of a free review of these recommendations. Um, I didn't understand why the police were chasing Marcus in the very beginning. Um, Another character, uh, Willie, tells him it's a sting. And how was Marcus involved in the scenario? I did not understand that. Uh, the artwork had a bit of an Akira Katsuhiro Otomo vibe in some panels, uh, which was, except it was a lot dirtier and not as clean, which I thought was great. Now, my final recommendation is another book by Mr. Reminder, by Mr. Rick Reminder, and that's Black Science, Volume 1, uh, called How to Fall Forever. Uh, the art is by Dean White and Matteo Scalera. Now, a story synopsis here. Anarchist scientist Grant McKay has done the impossible. Using the pillar, 
He has punched a hole through the barriers between dimensions, allowing travel to all possible universes. But now Grant and his team are trapped in the folds of infinity. The pillar, sending them careening through a million universes of unimaginable adventure, sanity, flaying danger, and no way home. Presenting the first mind-warping chapter of the critically acclaimed sci-fi epic by the Superstar Creative Team, which I mentioned before. Now to my thoughts on this book. Matteo Scalera's art gives me a Bill Sienkiewicz vibe, except there are clean lines and long characters. What did I like about this book? The desperation of the characters trying to get home. The situations they land themselves in, in which leads to fighting the unknown simply to stay alive. Flashbacks which tell of Grant's project and how it affects everyone on the team. The rivalry with Kadir. Now, this was a page-turning sci-fi adventure from the start. I read these books and only wish I can put together stories like this. Hopefully with all this writing and reading, I'll get there someday. I'm not an aspiring writer, I guess, but I do love writing. Um, and finally, as I mentioned before, you check out these recommendations. Tell me what you think. By purchasing the books through the provided links, it will be supporting myself and the publishers of these titles. Thanks for watching.